Hi, guys, and welcome to Keep Hope Alive podcast. Hi, Jen. We got Jen Shulock with us today, and it's going to be a great show. She is an awesome wedding photographer, artist, and she does the speaking. She does everything in the event industry. I got the pleasure to hear you speak at one of the meetings, and she was amazing. So welcome to Keep Hope Alive podcast. Yay! Ah, we're here to keep hope alive. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's about, right? <laughs> Share these stories and everything. So uh, really quick, I'm going to ask you a question, and it'll be a fun answer from you. How many weddings have you been to in the past, uh, let's say 20 years? I don't have a number for that. I don't keep track. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> well, I think it was like 300, maybe like all my life. I've been to I so literally many cannot even give you a number. I've just been living my life. I've not been living it by numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So the reason I ask, one of our sponsors is lifeonrecord.com. Ah. And yeah, <laughs> and what they do um instead of having a guest book they have like an interactive guest book which is a rotary vintage phone that the guests can pick up and leave a message and then say congratulations i say it's all in the tone of the voice maybe they go ah finally you got married you know way to go <laughs> who knows what they'll say but right next to that phone they have a qr code so they can take their cell phones out scan that code really quick and leave a message before or after even during the event if they would like to after all those messages are collected life on record will put them on a 12 inch vinyl record or burn them onto this thing that looks like a lit boom box. It's so cute. So they get the phone number for one year, which is really cool. And plans uh -huh. only start at $99. So it's amazing. Uh -huh. I love the concept for the wedding industry. But it doesn't have to be all weddings. I mean, corporate events and family events and stuff like that when you have big gatherings. But you can check out their information at www lifeonrecord.com. All right. So Jen, I love it that you're a creative photographer. And I just like I said, I love when you uh, were speaking the other day and hearing your story. So let's start with that story. <laughs> Who is Jen? Wow, what that's do not we a loaded. Not know about you yet. <laughs> that is not a loaded question at all. <laughs> no, not at all. I'm coming right at it. Who is Jen? <laughs> um, well, there's a lot of things that people probably don't know because I've only since the last three years entered the wedding industry as a whole. Like I avoided it for most of my career, and I actually didn't even know I could be a wedding photographer as a career at all. Like I, I didn't know that people did this and. When I got married 18 years ago, I was like, I I knew I wanted photography, but I definitely didn't know how to ask for that or look for that. And yeah. so part of my story is the fact that I didn't hire anybody on my day. And so I had, um, we had a friend come in and do about 24 film photos, which was, they were beautiful. But my personality is I want my all the details, the whole story. And um, so that's kind of what brought me into the wedding industry in the beginning was not hiring a photographer. So that's something not not a lot of people know why I started in general. Um, that and I had people telling me that I should probably just go ahead and do it. And I started taking classes. And they, you know, fast forward, like most photographers, right? You take all the classes and you get all the knowledge and then you figure out what you really want to do. That's kind of yeah. where I, I've come to this place where I'm like, okay, now I know what I actually enjoy. There's the yes. stuff that, you know, you, you need to, you say yes to, because in the beginning you were really passionate about all types of photography. And then, then over the years and as time goes by, some people stay with all the realms of photography. For me, weddings give me all the realms of photography in one day. I don't know if yep. you, I don't know if you realize that too. Like you've got still life. You've got portraits, you've got people and things and, and candids and, you know, post portraits, architecture, yeah. floral, yes. rings, yes. 
um, hey, people <laughs> hanging out with each other, you know, yeah, all the details of a wedding day to me means that it's just, it's not boring. It, it You're always in motion at a wedding. And I love you are, you yeah. definitely are, except I don't do pictures when they're eating. <laughs> I'm just like, nope. I only I'll do that upon request. Break. I only do that upon request. I actually had one couple tell me, could you please get pictures of people eating? Cause we would love those. And I love that because everybody <laughs> <Yeah>. loves good. <laughs> uh, <yep. laughs> I love it. You know, so I got more people requesting that we don't out of all my gears in the industry. And I was yeah, just like, like I said, so 16 plus years, I've only had one person actually request eating. Yeah. Butter. So that that's pretty good funny. considering. <laughs> Did they uh, do the cake smash to you that event or like, or did it, they serve it nicely to each other? <laughs> honestly, I don't even remember how they did the cake part. I just remember <laughs> they were really excited to have people eating, like just, you know, faces yeah. full of food and, and people <laughs> shoving forks and knives and spoons and everything, you know, cutting things. So I just, I love the fact that everybody's got their own unique personality when they get married and like. I I'm always open to see what their ideas are for the photography because you just never know. <laughs> I know. So the consultations are always fun. Um, they'll either give you a list or say, I I trust your creative, you know, but I'll like for me, I'll tell them it, it goes with your lineup too, you know. So if they have a coordinator or a DJ doing it, we're going to do this and this and this. I love the dancing pictures. I think that's funny to me, you know, or, you know, when they start drinking, it's different, you know, they're so prim proper getting married and walking down the aisle. And then they're like letting loose. And I love yeah, it. There's because... something about, there's something about the, the natural laughter and the natural yes. joy that comes with, dancing yes. or any kind of activity that doesn't revolve walking down the aisle you know like <laughs> and you know it's and it's kind of funny that you mention this because a lot of my weddings are very offbeat and unique we don't do a lot of traditional things in my weddings usually um there's a mixture of couples that choose to not do half of the stuff that we're talking about in, in the wedding industry um mostly because they just want to do it how they want to do it they'll do game night they'll do they'll do uh They'll do just some random things. They won't even have a DJ. They'll just do their own thing. Um, it's not really what's great. happening, huh? No, I'm kidding. no see, I, I mean, because I've seen a slump kind of going down uh, with DJ work and bands. Not quite, you know. I I've heard it in all different kinds. Really, and honestly, because the industry is so vast, it really depends on where you are. And I know that we're both in Texas. Yeah. But I meet wedding pros all over the United States and they all have different realms of people that they work with. And for me, my realm has simply gotten a lot smaller and more unique, which is really great because I don't mind going to the courthouse where they have none yeah. of those. Or I don't mind going to somebody's backyard where they spent months preparing it to look like an amazing wedding setup, which they really did. Like, I love this one client yeah. that did that. And I just think that, you know, a couple of my clients, they'll just go, they'll go to a big website and do the 20 point checklist and say, well, we need to do these things because the website yeah. tells us this is part of the wedding traditions. But I really love people that make their own traditions too. So I no matter that what that looks yeah. like for everybody, like all the couples that are listening right now, like I like to look at it like this. I made a lot of weird choices for my wedding day 18 years ago. And now that we've come so far forward and how offbeat and quirky we can all be, that's why I created Weirdo Weddings is because Weirdo Weddings was simply a name to people I was already working with. I was already working with very quirky people. And I love that because no wedding, I mean, I know that no wedding is ever the same, but the standard recipe of a wedding is the same, right? Right. You're going to walk yeah. down some kind of an aisle. You're going to make a commitment to each other. You may or may not exchange rings. And then you're going to probably kiss. And if you're, that's your thing, I've had one person do a hug and then they leave, go down the aisle. And then you either have a reception or a dinner or something, some kind of a celebration afterwards. So that's a basic wedding recipe right there. Yeah. So not, a, not a lot of that changes. But when you add in the couple's eccentric personalities or their style or their their love of games and books and, and nerdy movies, you, 
Well, the things are limitless, what you can do at certain wedding days when they decide if they want to yeah. play certain things. And, and, um, so I love that we're in this realm right now where it's getting more and more creative and there's still a lot of couples that want to use a lot of wedding pros for their team, you know, and get that stuff done. A lot of, oh, venues, yes. a lot of venues, um, a lot of, I don't know about you, but a lot of venues opened up over the pandemic. So a lot of new places opened up for people to have their weddings. I've um, seen all the new places. I was like, wow, like Dallas has grown. And then I was in Justin, Texas, Aubrey a lot. I mean, I was like, getting pushed out in different directions because of new facilities and I gotta say I love going to Aubrey it's so beautiful out there I just felt like I was in the mountains even though it's just hills <laughs> yeah if we have these everything. great pockets in DFW that feel like you're out in the middle of nowhere and then like 20 minutes later you're in the big city <laughs> <laughs> that's the hardest thing it's like oh get me out of here now, i think it's funny weather i love sunny days or partly cloudy days i cannot stand rain and my son is the opposite i love the rain i'm gonna go play ball and i'm gonna live in seattle i'm like oh please no <laughs> I don't want to be where it's raining, but you know what they say when you're a photographer and you have to do it during the day or whatever, whatever time overcast is the best. Yeah, we, of love, the we love the overcast and I have learned to mm -hmm. just be okay with whatever I show up to because there's, we yep. have no control over the weather and that sun, if it's in your face the whole time, I just try to warn my clients, you know, you may look like this. <laughs> But you're going to be in love and you're going to, you know, say your I do's and it's going to be wonderful. And I'll make yeah. sure we go do pictures in the shade somewhere so you're not squinting the whole time. <laughs> exactly. Now, I know one thing I've learned the way I do lifestyle documentary, a, a lot of my clients will go, where do we need to go? And I'll say, well, there's here, 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 but really it doesn't matter. Like you mentioned courthouse. Okay. So oh, yeah. I've done a couple court, you know, photo shoots, but when I took them outside, well, one of my favorite pictures is just blue sky and her veil over her head and they were kissing. And I'm like, that is so beautiful. You would never have known they were at a courthouse at all. You know, it's just like, but it touches my heart. I, I'll use it on my website and everything, you know, and just like, okay, well, you know, um, the other locations that I use are like a barn background and stuff mm -hmm. and everything. So, but during the holidays, oh my goodness, sometimes it's the hardest thing for photographers, you know, I, I try to live by the simple rule of if there's more than one photographer there and you have a group of people you're doing pictures it's like 10 to 15 minutes yeah but if you're going over 30 minutes and I'm waiting no <laughs> has that happened to you at all yet um what what kind of what kind of pictures Just are you talking if about it's like a family session or even individual and you're just wait waiting for them to get done in one so, spot because you need so that just spot so, just too. so everybody yeah just so everybody is as clear on what i do i i don't i don't do families and babies and kids and all that stuff anymore i only do weddings so um one particular example could be at white rock lake right white, white rock lake nice. is very popular for a lot yep. of portrait sessions. And so in the middle of my wedding, as we were finishing up the wedding ceremony and some pictures on the back side of the property, right? Um, we shifted into the sunset area where everybody was doing their golden hour sunset pictures. And so I had to be sure to like creatively crop or go low or go high, like figure out ways to capture the portraits of my clients without all the people and behind them. Um, so that was fun because we were all kind of like rotating. It was kind of like an unspoken time zone where we had a few minutes here, <laughs> a few minutes there. And, yeah. um, you know, and a lot of people are very nice, uh, you know, to just to ask for them to like, can I have this, may I have this spot when you're done? Or, yes. you know, is there a timer or you just go find a new spot if you don't have time? Cause as we know, sunset goes very quickly once it starts. So you might yeah. as well, you might as well just roll with it and go get your images that you need for your clients. And that way the whole experience is just 
you you know what you're doing and your clients trust you enough to go get the job yeah. done and then then we went right to the reception afterwards but it was great it was great because like that's just that's just yeah. how the photographer's life is is that if we find really really good spots we have to be okay with it's a public piece of property there's nothing oh, we can yeah. do it's just you know, be kind to each other. Honestly, that's really what it was. Yes. Out. Yes, definitely. And I love studying different properties that I use like, okay, what does it look like here and there? And I'll do individual pictures out, out there and stuff. Um, my son wanted me to take him to the haunted bridge. Is it in Denton? I heard about bridge. that. I almost, had yes. a, I almost had an elopement there and we changed our mind at the last minute. He went during the day and I was scared because I thought I heard a snake like right at the end of the bridge. And I'm like, whoa. And then I never wanted to watch the documentary. And then I finally did. And it said it didn't like women. And my son's like, we should go back at night with your camera. I go, no, yeah, she's I'm really excited that. about that one. <laughs> like, Do you want to buy me a new camera? <laughs> I'm not going out there. So yeah, but it was different. But you know, those are some good shots that you could get out there. They have different prop things and you know, looking for prop area venues is always fun and stuff. So um, you got started. And what was that like for you? Like knowing, okay, weddings is it? this is a, what I'm going to do. This is how, I mean, what steps did you take to get there? If we have a listener knowing how you built that platform and you went after your goals. So and like I started part of my story, I said yes to everything until I figured out that I didn't really yes. want to do everything. And then in 2019, I felt like I was starting to get a groove of like, okay, I'm accepting the fact that I'm not doing families. I'm ready to just jump into this wedding world and, and just take all the things that I love about wedding photography and the kind of people I love working with and just be ready to package it up. And then 2020 shut us all down. So I couldn't really pursue where I thought I was going to go. And then yeah. at the end of the summer in 2020 is when I started Weirdo Weddings. And the steps I took to start this was to identify who I was authentically and who mm -hmm. am I as an artist? Who am I as a person? Who am I? Who have I been working with this whole time that I didn't realize, you know, I'm I'm the I'm the person that figures it out later. Sometimes I just go do the thing and then I'll figure it out later. It's kind of what I did with my business. I became pink light images from the pink hair. I became weirdo weddings in the, the heights of the pandemic because it was a necessary step, but it just really was a name to something I was already doing. And sometimes we don't stop long enough to identify what's going on in our lives and business to push forward. And sometimes yeah. like I still, I'm year three and I'm still figuring out that why were you trying to be so artistic about this thing? Just say it straight to the point. <laughs> a lot of people thought I was a wedding planner in the beginning because I didn't say weirdo weddings photography. I just, I don't like typing it and I don't like saying it all the time. I don't want to say it all the time. <laughs> but they thought I was a planner because I had all these great ideas. And I was like, it's, I have ideas because I'm always thinking about the photography. That's why. Yeah, um, so definitely. They're really, I'm not going to say that there's like a five steps that took me here, but the steps really are, if you're going to extend your brand, which is what I did, I extended mm -hmm. a branch to an already established brand. I would say you need to identify who your people are and what are you wanting to do? If yes. you are in graphics design, do you want to have a spe specific niche of graphics design that you want to pursue? Um, if you're in the wedding industry, is there a specific niche of the wedding industry that you want to pursue? Um, for me, it was a no brainer. I already know there's a lot of offbeat and weird couples and very quirky people that literally, and I still haven't met so many of them. They need to know I exist. They don't even know I exist. They will and now. <laughs> they're, they're slowly realizing, and part of it's my fault. Again, I should have had t-shirts three years ago that said Weirdo Weddings Photography. Yeah. And if I would have, yeah. I probably would have had three times as much reach. But you know what? 
I would rather learn it now than 10 years from now. And I would rather have started the pursuit of my dream versus just waiting on everything to be perfect. And if anybody knows me, I don't do that. I'm too impatient for perfect sometimes. And mm-hmm. I think some people, this is not part of the steps, but some people you're so paralyzed by your fear, you won't even go do anything at all. So it's like, well, what are you going to do with your life? Once you've discovered something you're really passionate about. And I have friends that will sit here and tell me, well, I want to ride. I want to do this. I'm like, well, why aren't you doing it? It's literally cost you nothing to sit down at your computer and type something. Yeah. What are you waiting for? And for me, like for me, it was, it wasn't a matter of what are you waiting for? It's like, what took so long is what everybody told me. They're like, what took you so long? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. All I know is what happened to me now. Yes, that happened to me with the podcast. I had so many people asking, hey, you need to do this. And back in the day, I started a company called Webcast, and it was interviewing vendors. But it was a little too pricey at the time, so I, I cut back. And here comes the world of podcasts, and it's basically free. So, you know, it's like, oh, okay. Well, I'm going to go back to interviewing. And then just the demand where I put it out there, I'm hit. I'm like getting booked nonstop, which well, is let, nice. Let's just be, let's be honest and real for a second. We love talking yeah. about ourselves and we want to be seen, heard, valued, yes. loved. You, you name the checklists here. And I think yes. there's a very valid thing to what we're doing on podcasts or videos or short form videos, long form videos. Um, working on documentaries or working on things that are visual and audio, because if people like, I just had a conversation today about using your voice. Like if you don't use your voice, who's going to do it? Like you have to use your voice. And I'm actually talking about your literal voice as we're sitting here talking with microphones in our faces. Um, (laughs) on those three years, those three years that I started where to weddings, I was on Clubhouse and Clubhouse is an audio only platform where you can't even see people while they're talking. So as I'm here, I'm emoting with my hands and my mouth, but it's like we all, we had nothing to do but to listen to each other. And we had hopes, dreams, struggles, failures, um, things that we would talk about that were deep and dark and got us to emotional places. But how many of us know that these kinds of places that were deep and dark and scary actually kind of bring forth the most amazing, fulfilling, rewarding dreams of our life? Exactly. At least that's what I did. That's what I did. That's what I walked through. But had I, had I not had a pandemic shut me down, I don't think I would have pursued it this hard. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have found it. Honestly, I think I was too busy. I kept myself too busy and I wasn't still long enough to seek something out for my life that was already waiting for me. And I think that's kind of important as everybody who's listening or everybody who listens from now forward is that the busy and hustle culture, while it is so fabulous and addictive, I think also the rest culture needs to come in. You need to learn how to rest and you need to learn how to play. A lot of people think of play as a four letter word. And I I love the looks that I get from people that don't understand that it's okay to turn everything off and go outside and play. Like we shouldn't have to ask for permission. We should actually be taking ourselves out to play. And I'm, I'm the number one committer here of, I need to play more. I need to rest more. I need to turn everything off because as we know, the world does not fall apart when we take a break. And a lot of us need that break to re-energize and more creative ideas come to us. I mean, I had to turn off my phone because it kept going bing, bing. I was like, I can't do it all. You know what? I just need this time. And I've even set aside for, I call it mommy time, go out and do karaoke, you know, starts at nine. I want to get there by eight and I'm going to stay till 11, but that is my one day out of the week for me to enjoy me. And what I like doing is singing. So, but you know, there it's, it's relaxing. I can enjoy having freedom and stuff like that and then it's back to work and back to routine you know what you know what the difference is the difference is is when you release all of that stuff and that that need to perform for everybody you literally just get to be a human being and i think we're missing that in our society 
there's a lot mm-hmm. of people that do it way better than I do. And I think that's great because they inspire me to go be a human being, mm-hmm. not a human doing. And I know many of us have heard that saying before, be a human being and not a human doing. But how many of us get caught up in the do, 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 a lot. A lot. And then you forget <laughs> to just go be. And I think I'm learning this over this last year to do literally do things for myself without guilt and shame. And it's so weird to say that here at 47 years old, that I'm just now figuring that out. And how does that look like these relationships I've had for, you know, 10, 15 years, and they haven't seen that part of me because I've never said, well, I will actually want to go do this. I want to go to a cafe and eat a hot dog. And they're like, but I thought you like, no, I want to go to a cafe and have breakfast all day. That's who I am. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you putting your foot down I that I had to learn I learned a lot about myself this year's so mm-hmm. I was like I've had all these relationships that didn't go quite right and I'm like what do I like to do I have learned I like dancing so going to Arthur's and Addison is my favorite now like I want to do that so I was like, okay, well, well, maybe it's this restaurant. You know, I like Olive Garden. And a lot of people will tell me, oh, no, it's such a chain. And we got to go here and there. And I'm like, no, Olive Garden has my breadsticks. I'm sorry. (laughs) I I will take myself to the Waffle House and you will like it. (laughs) Yes, yes. (laughs) You have to be honest and true to yourself. I'm just telling you, like I have, I have, you know, I've just been learning to not be so scared of what, not be, be scared to be me. And I think that's a lot of people are scared to be who they are and they'll give you the best of themselves that they think that they are, but they're really just kind of like facading with you. They've got masks on. And, yes. um, that's what I love about where I am in my business now is that, yeah, I am, I am me. And if you're hiring me, then you're getting me. You're not getting a yeah. version yeah. of me. You're getting somebody who's trying to bring joy into the room. Every time she walks into a room, it doesn't mean I always yeah. do it, but, and I'm the one who's socially awkward half the time. So I understand awkwardness and I understand awkwardness in front of a camera. Um, I've gotten better at that too. So like all of my clients, they we get each other and I think that's what's great about being a photographer is that you know and it, actually any client that you have as a business is that if you get each other then it's so much easier to work together exactly exactly now I think it's fun for podcasts too because you'll get the information you'll study that information and you interview that person but it's fun I, I love learning about new people and stuff and everything. So that brings joy to my heart. And, you know, I was like, I'm going to keep doing this. This is what I was meant to do with my life is help people heal and be heard. So that's how Keep Hope got alive. (laughs) So uh, (laughs) that's a good one. (laughs) I'm not not attended, but um, Definitely. I wanted to talk about your creative eye really quick. Oh, heck yeah. Um, I want to, if you can send me some samples of your work too, and I would love to show people like what you do because your work is amazing. So tell me about the creative, Jen. Like you see things in a whole new light and take it to you know, the way the sky is and how to position the people and what to wear, like, tell me that process and everything. Well, I can try to sum it up in a couple of different ways. So when I work with wedding clients, obviously I'm working with an atmosphere that I'll know ahead of time or I won't know ahead of time. And I love the fact that I can try to make something look better or, you know, more creative than it actually is. As we know, I mentioned Mm -hmm. the courthouse weddings before we all know that there's a lot of ugly courthouses out there, but if you look (laughs) at it from a different perspective, you can take an image and make the color tones different, or you can make it black and white. You can make it, um, take it from, I'm, I'm the subscriber of take it from as many angles as you feel you need to, to see what works, because you know that if you find it from a certain angle that gives you that little extra little joy bubble in your heart 
That's the yeah, stuff yeah. I seek after. Is that am I going to keep using ideas until I find out what I need? Yes. Um, with my clients, it's very much the same. Like I'll just keep trying different things. And, you know, a lot of us photographers, we've learned a lot of basics, you know, a, a lot of things, of ways to use our camera. Um, I try to keep it very simple. So I don't do a lot of like crazy creative stuff with my clients, but I try to capture true to the moments of what's really happening in those moments. And then that's why I yeah. get a lot of laughter and smiles in my images. Even if somebody's really self-conscious about something, my hopes is that they don't see that at all at the end. Now, exactly. if you want to talk conceptual work, that's just going to get weirder. So <laughs> my conceptual work is, is anything that is in my head, I want to get it out of my head. So <laughs> when I take a prop or I have an idea and I, I'm going to tell you, not every photographer is going to admit this, but I don't give a crap what kind of camera you have, go make the art because yes. I, I feel like if you get caught up in the gear, you're never going to really have the full experience. Um, I like to think of it as maybe you, you even assign yourself some homework every once in a while. And I've done that too. Like I'll have an idea in my head and I know that I actually just want to do it with my phone. You know what? It's not a cardinal sin to pick up your phone and make some art with it, especially if it's art. Now, if it's for yeah. my client, I probably would think a little differently, but if it is me expressing myself, which I do in my conceptual work a lot, is really yeah. just no matter what tools I have at my disposal, I'm going to grab it and use it. Um, to give you an example, uh, the other day I wrote myself an email because that's how I remind myself if I get an idea. I wrote myself an email, um, do a photo shoot under glass beads on an acrylic sheet, uh, acrylic plastic cool. sheet. Okay, so I had that in my head and I was like, oh crap, how is this gonna work? How does one do a selfie underneath an acrylic sheet with glass beads? I don't even remember how I did it at this point. I think it was like sandwiched between the two. The cool thing is, is that once I figured it out, mm -hmm. that, that it's the creative process I love. Not everything works out. And I think exactly. it's, supposed to, it's supposed to be that way. If you have an idea, it could take you five ideas to get to that, the idea that you had originally or the, yeah. uh, the original idea turned into something else. That is the creative process. That is the creative adventure that I love taking. And I take this into my wedding couples using not only styled shoots, but like I take that, that process, like I was just describing the creative process. I take it into my weddings too, because not everything is going to work. Not every idea is going to work, but if the couple is willing to work with me, then I'm going to figure it out till I can find the magic, the magic potion That's or whatever good. you want to call it. Um, because you know, when you do that little happy dance and your client's happy and you're happy, that makes me like the most fulfilled. And so that is the best feeling. And yeah. then when I get around my other creatives and we all get together and we create ideas and then we bounce ideas off each other. I mean, that's the best thing in the world is to have a community around you that just lets you be you instead of telling you what to do. Exactly. So that's, that's the kind of, that's the kind of things that I do is like, sure, you can give me guidance, but just don't tell me what to do. I'm going to, I'm going to figure it out and I'll figure it out on my own sometimes. And then if I need your help, I'll ask you for it. <laughs> See, I want to hire you. I'm looking for the theme of hope and starting this, but I want something very unique and different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm going to let you let me know. You write me and tell me, and I'm going to hire you definitely <laughs> because I wanted to do a new photo shoot and everything. So well, that's fabulous. But, yes. I'm, yeah. I'm up for any challenge right now. Like, you know, obviously we've got a few weeks of the holidays here, but uh, oh, no. yeah, like I, my, my word going into this next year and I know a lot of people do words and they, a lot of, a lot of people like cling to their word every year and they have a word that they they're driven by. And this year I didn't really, I didn't really put any effort towards it, but I thought to myself, you know what? I'm just ready for collaboration ready for That's collaboration. Good. Yeah. I'm ready to see where some of these things take me and I'm ready to just keep pushing forward is where I'm at. So it's, it's great. Cause I love the photography. I love the speaking. I love that I'm pushing myself on this. I love that, yeah. um, clubhouse pushed me into all the, all the different things of using my voice. I never thought I would have. See, and yeah, speaking like where else do you go and can people contact you to be a guest speaker you know 
do you have a website that they can go to and everything? Oh, see, you're catching me at a transitional time, but everybody can go to, you know, my main mothership is pinklightimages.com. But my goal, my goal through the winter here, I know whenever y'all listen to this podcast, y'all keep me accountable and message me. Okay. So my goal is to have, continue to have my pink light images brand, but weirdo weddings is going to come to the forefront. Weirdo weddings is going to have its own separate little link. And then my newest one is my speaking um, website. It's under pinkhairgen.com. Um, okay. Cur- currently, they all go to pink light images. So, <laughs> so <laughs> if you go to my website, you see a whole bunch of stuff. But yeah, on all the social medias, I've made a pink hair gen and I've made a weirdo weddings. So if you want to follow the journey of my creative couples, then you'll see that and you'll see my speaking adventures on pink hair gen on Instagram. Um I only do the social that I know I can keep up with. Let's just be real. I can keep up with Facebook and I can keep up with Instagram. And on Insta, I try to do a little bit of videos here and there because I do believe people want to see you and hear you and make sure you're a real person. Exactly. And I've learned like, (laughs) The one thing this gets pushed out, you know, through all socials, but I've learned that I love TikTok a little bit more, which is a really fun. So, I mean, I can express, you know, well, I think I express here the real me. I I make bloopers, (laughs) but, you know, having fun and singing, like when it was Halloween, I had Chucky (laughs) face or something. Want to play? And my dog is licking me out. I was like, I don't care. You know, that's who I am. I'm fun. I'm entertaining. I want that to come across. So, but Instagram, yes, I'm starting to like link to tree a lot. So that's fun to post the socials and the podcast on. So it's just fun reaching out that way as well. Um, also, um, a couple more questions. Do you do albums with your work? So say you have a client or how do you do this if they want it prints or an album? Um, that's a very um, select service after the fact, after the wedding, of course. Yeah. Um, I really love would love to do more albums um, as far as making sure I offer them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, because, you know, I, the digital world is is apt to fade um and unless you have some prints or something to flip through it's like you're not going to have a lot to you know tangibly hold so yeah I do I would like to say I keep it simple again I don't want to offer so many different things that I can't keep track of what I've offered so I just kind of keep it with one album one type of album with several different size options and that's it yeah that's good that's good I know for like me my company I just do digital they they get the free download and everything, but that's my way of keeping it simple. But I analyze every picture. What would they really want? And my mentor, he laughs at me. He's like, oh, Nadine, (laughs) he taught me. And everybody has to have a little mentor in life, but he taught me not to shoot too much. And I go, oh, you know what? He's absolutely right. (laughs) Well, and also I had somebody tell me, which was kind of helpful is like, remember that you're the master storyteller of this day. Yes. And I was like, yeah, but you, you don't, you have those clients that even though you pick the photo that you think is great and they're going to come back and say, can you just replace it three times? Um, that was always been a fear of mine. Like, what if I choose the wrong photo and then I'm spending more time editing than editing. Um, so the, the clients that I'm, am able to work with that pick their images for the album, it turns out great. Like I don't have to question replacing things and, and they get their, what they feel is their best selves in the album. And I know that's, I know that's part of my job, but I don't Mm -hmm. want them to not be involved. Sometimes I like them being involved in the choosing process. So as a matter matter of fact, I have something coming up in the next month or two that I'm going to sit down with my client and we're going to pick not only their wedding images, but their vow renewal images. So I'm super excited to sit there and do that with them. Yay! That's awesome. I love it. I love it. And being in this event industry is just wonderful. So I know I've been in it for over 25 years and I love it. And I can't wait to get back full running in there and everything 
because I want to make sure everybody gets a podcast when you have that industry <laughs> as that little commercial and everything. So, but definitely, well, I hope I'm not missing anything with your interview. I'm trying to think about it. I can, I I can the- um, my podcast as well, yeah. because, yes. um, so you asked about socials and websites, you know, mm-hmm. and our, and this is coming from a business owner to another business owner. And for anybody who's listening, who's a business owner, don't feel like you have to be the excellent perfectionist at every single thing that you're trying to do. Okay. And here's the thing. My podcast is m- much more organic. I have decided it's the one thing in my business and my passion that I'm just going to throw it up there. It's not like a second grader, but it is, it doesn't need to be polished in a super big production. Um, This is the one thing that I know I can do quickly. And it's the one thing I know that I love doing is having conversations. So I started Tattoos and Toddlers podcast, which is about basically what it's like to be a business owner and be raising small children. In my case, I have a six-year-old, but this podcast was actually inspired by somebody who had an eight-month-old at the time. And I just took myself back to being a new mom of what Mm -hmm. it was like that first year for me and into the second year of trying to have a business and a small child. Um, So that's kind of where this came from. And now it's kind of morphed into, even if you don't have a tattoo or even if you don't have a toddler, it's conversations about how we compartmentalize our lives, how we have businesses, but we have uh, responsibilities. Um, or parental responsibilities or caretaking responsibilities. Because I know a lot of people who may not have children, but they're caretaking for elderly family members, or they have a house full of pets they're caretaking for. Um, I have three cats. I feel like I'm always um, sweeping up after them. I mean, it's just, it's a part of life. It's another way to express life. I don't want to say balance because balance is not a thing, but compartmentalization of your time your priorities in your life. Yes. So I I love the fact that I can now own the fact that I want to be a business owner and I want to work. I don't want to be a stay at home mom. I figured that out real fast. Yeah. And then I thought to myself, well, now that I have the ability to do both, I have the time to do both. And I I only take on what I know I can because I still want to be there for my kid. And then I want to travel. I love traveling. But the podcast affords me those conversations with wedding pros all over the all over the place, artists all over the place. Um, I believe that every conversation is another way to learn. And if I can't it is. Tra- if I can't travel physically, then I'm gonna travel through conversation. So that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. I mean, I was like talking a bucket list and learning. I really don't need to have a guy in my life just to travel. That's the biggest thing for me, me trying to date at age 45. I always said that. I was like, all I need is a piggy bank and I can take myself to the Grand Canyon or <laughs> take my son. You know, I taught Liam you know, how to use the camera too. So I was like... He has a good eye too, which is amazing. So, and I might, I don't know if I'm going to do it, but I went after it. I might do a kid's camp for photography, which would be interesting. (laughs) So, but they can use cameras or their cell phones and do their homework and projects and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's another (laughs) great thing. That's another great thing is teaching the next generations, even though a lot of times they're teaching us. I think uh, they are, especially short form video. <laughs> right, well, like TikTok, Liam taught me. I was like looking at it. I feel so old. What do I do here? He's like, Mom, there's a filter. A what? A filter. He's like, this, this will make your skin look smooth and beautiful. I go, Ooh, it was a Christmas. <laughs> but I felt like, why is my 11 year old teaching me this? You know, um, Instagram and TikTok have always been big and, or not TikTok, sorry, Instagram and Twitter at the time, but now it's called what X? I think it's just an X. <laughs> I, I don't know. I want Twitter back. I like the bird. <laughs> so, give it the bird. Um, but definitely, you know, those things, uh, we're going into 2024. And AI is about to try to take over the world right now. But you know what? AI can't be as creative as a human can be. And 
that's what they need to know. You know, great, your cell phone can click on a timer and take your picture, but what about our eyes as photographer, our hearts, our souls, our creativity sees what needs to be shot. That's just my opinion. <laughs> Yeah, I love I love being in the experience. I don't want to sit behind a screen, um, sit behind a screen, and mm-hmm. have it generate something for me. I actually want to go out and do the things. Yeah. I don't, and a lot of people don't work that way. A lot yeah. of people like sitting in Photoshop for eight hours and creating beautiful worlds and whatever else they want to create. Because I do think there's a lot of things that we we need to create, especially like like I was telling you, like having a conceptual idea. And wanting to go do it, but you can't do it because you can't travel to like somewhere in Asia to go capture that thing. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that I would say. Yeah, that's at that point you're going into the imagination side of it. But me, yeah. I'm like I would rather go out into the forest and try to do these ideas with all natural as much as possible. And if I need Photoshop, then I'll use it at the last minute. It's got to be like a big concept for me to use Photoshop to make something fake. So. Um, that's the beautiful thing about <laughs> art. That's the beautiful thing about artists though, is that it's evolving for yeah. the parameters of making art. Yeah. But I still love the purest form of like, let's just go out and do it, go out and create. Do I don't need to do a prompt to do it. I'd rather just kind of like go out there and fidget with my gear and my camera and then just kind of then come back and figure out what I want to yeah. do with it. And I, I, I have a feeling that I'm always going to work that way. I really like having tangible things to yeah. touch and play with and um but yeah I just I I don't see a need to jump in and do anything with it now there's a lot of people that are like me too so there's a lot of people that don't use it at all and I'm like good for you I have you know, noticed I'm though, just like- if, if you're if you're an artist and you're entering contests they're starting to have segments out for if you're using AI or not so yeah wow I did not realize and if that. You're also, if you're in PR and you're you're answering articles and things like that, there's a lot of people that would prefer that you do not use AI generated content because you're needed. You need to use your own voice. Yes, your own voice be heard. And yeah. you know, I told Liam, don't use AI to write essays and stuff. Your teachers should be smart enough to tell if it's AI versus a kid writing a paper you know and I, I mean my <laughs> my companies that I've been working around they're using they're using software to detect it that's really what it's coming to is like that I was like oh that's great you're gonna have things write things for you what does that mean <laughs> <laughs> well now oh, that, that have scares to me checked. yeah not yeah have to be checked and spell checked and AI checked so that is craziness yeah I mean, the, I agree with the, I like being in Lightroom to edit, you know, and that's made life so much easier. And, but the projects I want to get into, um, I might wait till I'm actually older though, (laughs) is I want to do alter ego photography and that is going to be interesting so it's using like you you versus you versus you in a picture so yeah. you could be the bartender serving you yeah so i was just like what would be so fun to make and use the creativity but then i was like my prices are going to be super high there's no way because it's a lot of work to do you know and i was like well, do I want to sell it to restaurants? What do I want to do? So, but I was like, but it's a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. And at that point, like, like we're, like we're saying, like you're, yeah. you're going to have to sit down and make decisions for your own life and business. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much yeah. what it is. It's like your path is your path and you need to yep. figure out what you want to do and don't yep. sit around and wait on somebody else to do it because I, they can't do it. You're the one that's supposed I to get know. up and do it. So I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much for coming on our show and telling yeah. us all about you. First of all, all about your creativity and being a photographer and being out in the industry and being a speaker. And just looking at that logo behind you is beautiful. That was so much <laughs> like, fun. 
I just I ordered like, a hoodie today with it on too. So I was like, oh, I can't wait to really? wear my hoodie. <laughs> that is awesome. And it gets couple, cold. <laughs> I got to find out where to do a little storefront. Somebody has asked me, where can I get a Keep Hope Alive shirt? And I'm like, what? Like that kind of threw me back a shirt. I didn't even think of that right away, but I think that's something I'm going to look into. So, hey, <laughs> but definitely everybody, I have a phone number. If you have any questions um, for Jen also, you can call 833-780-HOPE, which is 4673, and I will pass it on to her if you have any questions and everything, and I will have all your social links, of course, <laughs> posted so you can see her work and get in contact with her. Also, I wanted to thank our other sponsors who make Keep Hope Alive afloat, which is really cool. As I mentioned, we have lifeonrecord.com, your interactive guest book. We also have Bridal Shows com. If you are in the Dallas Fort Worth area and looking to plan an event, they host about four or five events, I think a year. I know, I guess Las Colinas and Dallas is coming up. And I know Dallas I also got is the email the for the Denton one too. Denton's coming up. Okay. Yeah. So we've got three, but check out her website. She'll have everything listed and her shows are wonderful to meet the vendors. Then we have Miles and Smiles events with Deborah Rose, and that's milesandsmileevents.com. But she is, she's so accurate. She has this investigation background, but she does the handwriting analysis and lipstick readings, and she's accurate. I was one of those people. No, 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 no. She sat in the office where I worked, and she nailed it. She got it. So. And she keeps creating these new things for events, which is really amazing. You got to talk to her and hear her story too. Actually, talking about stories, she is on here on my podcast and she talks about her company. So, hey, you look up Miles and Smiles. Then I have Bryce Harney, the magician mind mentalist that is right, brycemagic.com. Right now he's traveling across the state, doing shows, having a good time. So he check him out. And then we have richmondpunch.net. Graduated from the Juilliard. He's a great violinist. He's played in front of a million people and a couple of TV shows playing the background and everything. But he will travel and he does a, a lot of events. So check him out. All right. So... Um, of course, you can find all the podcasts on wherever you find your podcasts. Also, our website is www.keephopealivepodcast.com. Until next time, I hope everybody has fun. We're about to celebrate the holidays in a couple of days. So happy holidays, Jen. <laughs> and thank you for having me on today. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. And I look forward to to bringing you back and sharing anything across social media. So make sure you reach out to Jen. Guys, until next time, love and light. Love you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> She's all happy. You jump.